I want you to turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy, uh, the first chapter, and uh, I want us to uh, read verse 13 and 14. And uh, I want to, uh, last, I think it was Wednesday, week ago, and uh, Brother Moore preached last Wednesday tonight, but uh, uh, Wednesday, week ago, uh, I preached a message on the soldier's course. And I uh, talked about that, that soldier following that course, that line of duty that he's supposed to. And then I told about it, the end of it with a story about a, a young man by the, man, uh, by the name of William uh, Borden and, uh, and how he just gave it all to God. And he was, by the time he was uh, in the, uh, the 12th grade and going to graduate, he was already a millionaire. And, uh, but, when, but he got saved and went off to college. And you know the story that I told and, uh, but when he, uh, they got him a Bible, he wanted a Bible. So when he, he wrote in there, no reserve, two words, no reserve. And so when he, when he uh, left, left uh, Yale University, he wrote uh, two more words. He went on to China and to do some missionary work there, and he, and he gave all of his wealth away. But in the, the, those other two words, he said, no retreat. And then when he went over there to Egypt, he came down with that disease and he died. And, uh, and, uh, but when they got his belongings back, uh, he had two more words written and, there, and the, those two words was no regret. Amen. And, and, uh, and that, was a, that was the course of a great soldier. What he started out with, Thank God he, was, he had a made-up mind. And, and we talked about how Paul said, I fought a good fight, I, I finished my course. And, and uh, he kept the faith through all the course that he went through. He never deviated from one, not one thing, but he held his course. And uh, we talked about that soldier's course. But tonight I want to go, go a little further and talk a little bit something about a soldier. And I want to deal with the soldier's calls. Amen. And uh, Paul was uh, writing here in 2 Timothy, and, uh, he's and uh, he gave us some good examples about a soldier's calls. And I want you to hear it tonight. In verse number 13 and 14, let's stand as we read God's word together tonight. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse number 13 and 14. The Bible says, hold fast. Notice the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Notice what he said, that good things which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Amen. I want to read those two verses one more time because I want it to sink deep into our into our minds and our spirit tonight. Paul said again, hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. But notice what he said, that good things which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Amen. Stretch forth your hand this way one more time and just ask God for his holy anointing. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, tonight. Honor in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Can everybody say amen? I want to say where Paul is talking about whole fast, the, for, the, the words that he had spoken, I want you to notice one more time of this. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou have heard of me. Amen. Thank God. When I began to look at this tonight and uh, I saw uh, about a soldier's cause, what Paul wanted that soldier to do. Amen. You know, when I begin to think about when when David was preparing to fight Goliath, 
And uh, David answered his brothers when his brothers criticized him and uh, with a question. And what are you doing over here? Amen. But David said, you know, he said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause why I am here? Oh, yes, because we know that Jesse said unto David, his son, he said, take now thy brother and the and if a, of the, this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren. And then he said, and carry these ten cheese unto the captain of, the, of their thousand and look how, they, how thy brethren fare and take their pledge. And uh, then we know when David gets over there, uh, the elder brother, Eliah, oh yes, heard what he spake unto the men and Elias answered, was kindled against David, and he said, why, came, why camest thou down hither, and with whom thou hast left those few sheep in the wilderness? And then he said, I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And then David said, oh, yes, what have I done? What have I done to you for you to say all that to me? Amen. He said, here's there not a cause. Amen. Oh, my. You see, David's cause was the reputation of God. Amen. Goliath was terrorizing and taunting the children of God. And you see, their lack of faith and their courage, it reflected on God himself. And can I state here tonight, the lack of faith and courage it does reflect on God himself. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm telling you, folks, I've seen people start out great, and they would make big statements, but through the journey and through the problems, through the battles, they would seem to give up. Oh, yes. But thank God for a man, praise the Lamb of God, that had a cause, no matter what it could be, he was there to do what God wanted him to be to do. Hallelujah. Oh, my. I, I, you know, as I was looking at this today, and I thought, my, give us more men like David that will have a cause to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. I know we're living in perilous times. We're living in grievous times, hard times. Things are things are browbeating us, things are coming against us, but I'm going to tell you, God's looking for a soldier in these last days, thank God, that will have a cause. I will stand for that which is right. Amen. You see, we see in that story that David wanted to set the record straight. Yes, he did. Like David, I want to say we have a cause too. I said, we have a cause too, cause, because all, cause all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, because there's a literally burning hell where loss goes for eternity. And I tell you, we have a cause. Amen to God. I thought it today as our uh, young brother Bragg, he brought me, uh, I found it on my car. And, uh, and I begin to read it. He wants to do something for God, trying to get the word out. He sees a cause as a soldier to plant the seed, the word. And as, as I began to, you know, read that, and I thought, my, my, God, give us more young men that will stand in the gap to make up the hedge. We see how the devil has torn great breaches in the wall. Amen. Tor has torn the walls down. But God's looking for a man in the hour that we're living in to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge. Amen, I said he's looking for a man to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge. Oh, yes. You said, well, Brother Cauley, I'm feeble in my doing, but I'll tell you what, you can stand for truth. You can stand for that which is right. Hallelujah, the giants of our day is roaring. Amen, and they're roaring against the church. Amen, but my God, God's looking for a soldier that will have a cause. Thank God to stand in the gap to 
make up that hedge. Their souls are dying. Amen. Hell is enlarging itself. How good God in these last days is looking for a person. Thank God say, yes, I have a cause. I will do what God wants me to do. I thought about the three Hebrew boys. Amen. In their day, they had a cause to stand for God. Amen. When everybody else was bowing down because of pressure, these old boys was willing to give their life for the cause of Jesus Christ. They looked at that old king and said, we're not going to bow. Our God is able to deliver us. Our God is able. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, when I read that, even that story, I said, God, give us more Shadrachs, Meshachs, and Abednego. Give us more men like that. Thank God that will stand in the middle of defiance and say, hey, we're not going to bow. I'm telling you, folks, if we're going to be a soldier like we ought to be, we're going to have to have a determination. I said, we're going to have to have a determination. Oh, yes. And mama, he said, hold fast. That means to remain tightly, secure. Oh, yes. You see, the expression holds fast. It comes from a Greek echo and means to have, to hold, to retain, or to keep. You see, the ideal is that of getting a firm grip on something and holding on to it. You see, a soldier, ladies and gentlemen, it's trained how important it is never to lose control of his weapon. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, we've got the greatest weapon that we could ever have. Amen. And if you lose control of it, I'm telling you what, the enemy will destroy you. Oh, my. You see, if the enemy gets a hold of his sword, not only... Is, is he left defenseless, but the enemy has a greater advantage over him. And do you know many soldiers have been killed with his own weapon? I said many soldiers have been killed with his own weapon. But you see, Paul warns us. He said, hold fast. Amen. Hold fast. In other words, to retain and to keep possession of sound doctrine. Oh, yes. Thank God. I know we got many doctrines out there, but oh, my, the only one that's going to keep us through is sound doctrine. Oh, yes. You got a lot of things are blowing past us that will not hold, my friend. But oh, but my, my, we must hold fast of the sound words of this doctrine. Hallelujah, that Paul said, if we are going to make it. Oh, my. You see, when I look at the word doctrine and what it is that Timothy is to get a, a firm grip on, Paul said, the form of sound words. The form of sound words which thou hast heard of me. Amen. Timothy what I have talked to you and, and instruct you, they have been sound words, and you gotta have to hold fast to them. Oh my, you know why people today are in church, out of church? They may get saved for just a little while, and uh, you know, and then you don't see them no longer. It's because they're not holding fast. They're not holding fast, but Paul had been faithful to teach Timothy the sound doctrine of the word of God. Timothy was to hold on to that doctrine. Are you hearing me? I said Timothy was to hold on to that doctrine. My God, friend, oh my, I want you to notice he wasn't to change it in any way. I said he wasn't to change it in any way. He wasn't to soften it. He had no authority to alter it in any way. He was to hold fast to it. Are you hearing this preacher tonight? My God, if we are going to make it, we're going to have to hold fast to it. Let's don't change the book. No, no, no. But let's hold on to this doctrine that we've been taught and been preached. And my God, the Bible 
Bible said, contend for the faith that was handed down to you or delivered to you. Amen. Listen here, folks. Just as it had been handed, I want you to get this tonight. This is a soldier's cause. Just as it has been handed to him, he was to hand it to another. And the things that thou hast heard of me, I want you to get us, among many witness, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Oh my, when Timothy handed it to others, it was to be the same, listen, that Paul had taught him. You see, the change of Bible doctrine is, is to corrupt it. Amen. Paul spoke of sound words. Oh, I'm talking about sound words, words, sound. Oh, yes, it comes uh, from the Greek, and it means well. It means uh, uncorrupt. It means hold. Amen to God. Sound doctrine, can I tell you, is a healthy doctrine. I said sound doctrine is a healthy doctrine. Oh, my. I'm telling you, friend, if you want a healthy church, preach sound doctrine. Oh, my, if you weaken it and soften it up, you, I'll tell you what you're going to have. You're going to have a mixed congregation. Oh, yes, but when, you, when you're preaching a sound doctrine, you're going to have a healthy church. I said, you'll have a healthy church. Anything else is unhealthy and corrupt. Oh, my sound doctrine is supreme in the ministry. Oh, my, I want you to notice what Paul said. Thank God, the writing of Titus 1 and 9. He said, holding fast the faithful words that he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort, exhort and convince the gainsayers. Sound doctrine will convince the gainsayers. Woo! But he said in Titus 2 and 1, but speak thou the things which becomes sound doctrine. If it ain't sound doctrine, leave it alone. Woo! I'm talking about a soldier's cause. We're going to be a soldier of the cross. Let's speak, let's preach sound doctrine. Let's stand for that which is right. Amen. You know what brought the Hebrew boys through the fiery furnace? Thank God they held on to sound doctrine. They did. Thank God. You know what brought Daniel through the lion's den? It was sound doctrine. He believed in his God. He knew the writings of the God's word. Hallelujah to God. Listen here, folks. This is why we Pentecostals contend that the word of God is the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. Hallelujah. We do not rely upon hand-me-down traditions of man-made teaching. We simply take God at his word. We practice. We preach. We protect and publish the Bible. Yes, we do. We are warned that these are those who do not want sound doctrine. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 4 and 3, he said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall he to themselves teachers having itching ears. I've never seen in my life people don't want the truth any longer. Just, oh, tell me smooth things, preacher. Tell me something that's gonna make me feel good, but don't, tell, don't dig around me. Don't tell me about my sins. But I'm gonna tell you, friend, and, oh, my sound doctrine will cause you to become a more healthier Christian. Hallelujah. If you live by the book, your life will not be corrupt. Amen. Amen. You see, we wonder why the church has become worldly and the world has become churchy. It's because there's no sound doctrine preach. I believe, thank God, we need to stand for that which is right. You know what? This country was founded upon the word of God. It was founded by principles. And my, my, yes it was. But now, you look at, our, at the White House today. You look at the corruption. 
I'll tell you why it, we're in a shape that we're in because they kicked the Bible reading out of the schools. They take, they're trying to do away with the Ten Commandments. And if you say anything about God, you're in trouble. I'm telling you, no wonder we're in the mess that we're in. But you know what? It's because the church lit up. They let up. I said they let up on their sound doctrine, and they quit preaching the truth, and they begin to say everything's all right. Just come on in the door. And we brought in our Hollywood boys, amen, and all their glamour, and my, we, and we decorated our stage. Asia, but I'm going to tell you, and, and, the, and the Spirit of God's not working, and we're not seeing lights change like they used to be. But as a soldier of the cross, there's a cause to stand for sound doctrine and sound teaching and preaching. God, help us. Hallelujah to God. Oh, yes. You see, many refuse sound doctrine and follow after those who cater to itching ears of a pagan society. Yes, they do. The, even, as I mentioned, the people of Isaiah's day said to the prophet, they said, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. Amen. Is that where we at? Prophesy unto us smooth things things. Prophesy deceit. Amen. This is where we at. I'm telling you, and I'm, oh my, when I, when I began to read some of these things, in my mind, I thought, oh God, help me to, help me to be a soldier of cause and help me to never deviate from the truth, but help me to stand upon this word. The Bible said heaven and earth would pass away. He said, but my word will never pass away. Amen. I'll tell you what, sin used to be called black, but now we're, you know, we're colored it up and it's made it really light gray. Amen. Oh my, sin ain't like it used to be. And my, my, we, we're trying to smooth it over. But I'm telling you what, we've got a church world today that's living so loose and careless. And no wonder uh, preachers today said, I don't know what I'm going to do. We hadn't seen a move of God. But I thank God for what we had around here Sunday night. And I, I'll tell you what, you know what caused that? It was sound doctrine that was preached. I said it was sound doctrine that was preached. You know why my brother went through the Holy Ghost? I'll tell you why. It was sound doctrine that was preached. God had a soldier with a cause. Come to preach to us the word of God. I don't know about you, but I'm determined to hold out to the end. Oh, hallelujah. You can have, the, you can have this old world if you want to. But you see, I, I see where the clock stands. I see we're right on the threshold of the coming of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you what, I'm doing everything as a soldier and with a cause to preach this gospel and to let folks know sound doctrine is what we need in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. I don't want to soften it. I don't want to pull my, you know, dilute it anyway or delete it. I'm telling you what, friend, I want to hold fast. Oh, my, what God has handed down to me, our forefathers prayed and they sought God and God oh my bless them I thought my the early days had revival in the Hebrides revival they had a move of God in the Wales revival they had great moves of God and my, in the early Pentecost day we saw it I said we saw it they didn't mind getting out the fan and fanning the flame hallelujah I'm saying my God it's a cause as a soldier the stand for sound doctrine. If we stand for it, it's going to pay off. Your children will stay saved. You know why children are not living Pentecost no more? We let up. We're not, as a soldier, we're not teaching them sound doctrine. 
we put our own translation, and we've got another translation from another book. And uh, but I believe we need to go back to the old original book. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, Paul was right, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Oh, God. And I'm telling you what, friend, we need to hold fast what we got. Don't let the devil come in and steal it away from you. Paul said, hold fast the words that I have spoken to you, Timothy. Amen. Don't compromise it. Stand with it. And my, my, it'll lead others. It'll confuse the gainsayers. Oh, yes. I'm I, 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 we was at a place one time. We was talking, and there were some people talking. And um, my wife, sometimes she does have a lot of boldness. And she will get, she will get real bold when it comes to God's word. And someone was saying something that wasn't even in the Bible. And she was just giving her her little ideas or whatever. And, and my wife said, that, 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 that ain't what the Bible said. This is what the Bible said. And my, my, and when, when she began to quote them the word of God, I'm telling you what, they began to just, you know, dispersed. They began to get up and go. I'm telling you what, folks don't want sound doctrine. But I'm telling you what, what's happened, we have, we have compromised the truth and my, my, and, and, and the things that, uh, of that Bible, and then we brought a confusion to a young generation that grew up and don't know anything about the power of God, of a moving of God's spirit. But you know what I'm praying? God, let us get a cause back. Let us get, let's become that soldier that we ought to be. Thank God that we'll stand and fight like we've never fought before. I don't know about you, but my dependence is on God. I said, my dependence is on God. Woo, hallelujah to God. I'm going to tell you what. Oh, oh, Shadrach, Meshach looked at that king and said, hey, we know the God that we serve. We know that he's able to deliver us. But if he don't, oh, king, we're still not going to bow down. Woo, hallelujah to God. Oh, Daniel, he depended upon, upon his God. Three times a day, he made his way. But I'm telling you what, thank God, he didn't care what the threat was. Oh, he didn't care what the, what the petition had said. He was going to pray to his God because he knew that his God was able to, to deliver him. And when he faced the lion's den, you know the story. Oh, yes, thank God. God sent an angel down there and locked the jaws of the lions up. Oh, yes, but the old king couldn't sleep all night long. But when he went back down to where the lion's den was, he said, oh, Daniel, has your God delivered you? And he said, live forever, O king. Last night, God sent an angel, and he locked the jaws of the lions up. I'm all right, O king. Thank God, I'm telling you what, there was men that depended upon God. Oh, yes. I want you to notice what the scripture says here. He said, hold, hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Notice what he said, that good things which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. You see, the word keep means to watch. It means to guard. Oh, yes, to keep. Amen. Oh, my, my. I don't know about you, but we as children of God, it's my cause as a soldier to warn you, you've got to watch. If you're going to maintain what you've received and what you have, you've got to watch. You've got to stay on guard at all times. Ain't that right? If you let down your guard, you're in trouble. 
to lay your armor down, you're in trouble. I'm telling you. You see, it is a military word that speaks of guarding and protecting one post in the line of duty. This is a serious responsibility. And I feel like every parent in this place, you got a post of duty. Oh, yes, what is your post? It's to guard that home, protect that home, keep that home safe. Hallelujah, secure, hold fast. Oh, my God. We wonder why our children, sometimes our children act like they do. I wonder if we've let our guard down. Amen. Listen here, Paul had set the example. A little later, he would testify. He said, I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Yes, I've been through the hard times. I've been shipwrecked. I've been beaten, left for dead. But I did not let my faith waver. I've held fast. I've endured hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Woo, hallelujah. That was his cause as a soldier to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Listen, Paul was driven by conviction. He stood for truth without compromise and it was costing him his life. It may cost you your life, your influence, your surrounding, but can I tell you, don't give in, don't waver. It may cost you a few friends. It may cost you some family friends, but hold fast to the word of God. I've known people say, well, I ain't gonna have nothing to do with them no more because they're just gone crazy. Amen, no, they hadn't gone crazy. They got a hold of something that's brought life into them. Thank God it's brought joy, and peace, and contentment in their hearts and their lives, hallelujah. Oh my, it's the cause of a soldier for me to preach to you tonight. Thank God, hold fast. I said hold fast, hallelujah. Don't waver. Don't waver, don't throw in the towel. Woo. I know Brother Ivy, Brother Keith, oh my. You're talking about soldiers of the cross in the middle of defiance. They were still coming to church. I'm telling you, is just very few services they did miss. Very few. Probably you could count them on your, your fingers. But you see, they had a cause. They was going to hold fast. Hallelujah. Yeah, they didn't have it. Be generic, you say. Yes. But I'm going to tell you what. They held on to the word. They held fast. When that daughter was laying there dying with cancer, cancer was wrapping her body up. Do you want me to stay home with you? No. Go to church. Go to church. Thank God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, folks. If there was a time that we need to be more committed as and ever before, it's a cause to be committed. Thank God when we, when we are committed, it's going to cause our children to be committed. Amen. When we are sold out completely to God, you know what? It's going to cause them to sell out completely to God. Amen to God. Let me tell you something, folks. Uh, I've come too far to turn back now. Oh, I'm telling you, oh, my dependency is upon Christ. Uh, I've got to have him. I said I've got to have him. I cannot live one minute without God. I can't live it. I was telling God the other day, I said, God, not even one half of a second. I don't want to live without you. Amen. I'm depending upon God. Hallelujah. Listen here. We see that Timothy was to depend on the Holy Ghost for power and leadership. Church, 
Let me tell you this. I believe in that Holy Ghost. I said, I believe in that Holy Ghost. It's the thing that will give me power to overcome, to be able to get past my, the worst trial of my life. It's the Holy Ghost. You see, the work of God cannot be accomplished, accomplished in the power of the flesh, but must be wrought by the power of God. We can't do anything in our flesh. Oh, yes, because the flesh is weak. But when we are full of God's power and we're depending upon his power, whoo, I'm telling you what, we're, gonna, we're coming through. I said we are coming through. That old song says victory in Jesus. I'm telling you what, folks, we, my, my, we can have victory. Thank God if we'll walk in the spirit. I'm telling you, if we do that, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank God that old song, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hallelujah. And I have found that in the weakest of my time when I looked and I said, God, where are you at? I need you, God. Oh, my. And then the Holy Ghost, the power of God, would show up and begin to touch my life and make my life strong, hallelujah. Can I tell you, no one can do the work of God successfully without being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Lord taught this truth just before his ascension into the heavens. Notice what he said. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which was written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms and concerning me. You see, then open he their understanding that he might understand the scripture and said unto them, thus it is written and thus it be, behooves Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repenteth and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye witness of these things. And then he said, And behold, I'll send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. In other words, I can't do anything without him. I've got to solely depend upon his power. If I go in the hospital, I've got to have his power. I don't know what I'm going to encounter when I walk into one of those rooms. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm in the hospital all the time. And I've walked into rooms that look like hopeless cases. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost that was working within me, oh, yes. You know, that I, I'll never forget one day when I walk in the hospital and I I was walking, that day I felt the calls to go. As a soldier of this cross, I just felt, an, you know, an auction through the Holy Ghost to go to the hospital. And as I was walking, I felt the Holy Ghost began to direct me into this room. And when I began to go in this room, I... I sensed the, the heaviness uh, my, my, that was in that room. Here was a man that was crying. Here was a man that seemed like uh, all hope was gone. But I'm going to tell you, but as I walked in that room, thank God, full of God, directed by God, and began to expound upon the word of God, I seen his eyes begin to open. Uh, hallelujah. And I began to tell him of the things of God and just give him some sound doctrine doctrine of that Bible, of what God could do. I'm telling you what, faith come alive. And when we pray for him, thank God those hands raised up and began to praise God. I'm telling you what, it'll happen every time. That's the reason I'm saying the importance is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. As a soldier of Christ, my cause here tonight is tell every member of this church, every person that goes to this church, you get full of God. Get full of the Holy Ghost, that God's power, hallelujah, 
You want to be affected? Get full. Get full of him. Get full of him. No matter where you go, you're going to affect others. They're going to feel what's, what's inside your heart and your life. Ooh, hallelujah. Everywhere Peter went in the Bible, I'm telling you just his shadow, when it came by the sick, when his shadow went over them, they were healed. Thank God, everywhere the disciples went, they saw miracles of God. I'm telling you what, friend, Jesus said, I come to set the captive free. Thank God, I'm telling you what, aren't you glad he come to set the captive free? How many remembers when you was in captivity, amen, bound by sin, the chains of sin was upon you and you had no liberty. You was, oh my, you was dragging a ball and chain everywhere you, everywhere you went, but thank God, God, one night at an altar, God gloriously saved you, unlocked the chain, broke the chain. Thank God now you can sing victory in Jesus. Woo, hallelujah to God. I'm telling you, friend, thank God. We ought to have a determination. Have a determination. I'm going to stand. I'm going to live by the sound words of God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to depend upon him. Woo. Sister Gloria, we've got to have him. We don't know in the midnight hour when we're going to get a phone call. I've got to depend on him. I said I've got to depend on him. And if i got him and i got the Holy Ghost, there ain't enough devils in hell. I said, there's not enough devils in hell that can make me become weak in my faith because I can be strong. I can be the warrior that God wants me to be. How many wants to be a soldier with a cause tonight? Let me see your hand all over this building. A soldier with a cause. Praise God. Our brother the other night preached to us so wonderfully. He didn't realize the message that he preached to us. I feel and I sensed it. He preached with a cause. Thank God. Is there a champion in the house? Is there a man that will stand up? Thank God. Even in, a, in an evil time, evil day that we're living in, and will declare the whole counsel of God. Thank God. Hallelujah. How many of you say, Brother Cawley, I want to be that soldier? I preached to you Wednesday week ago on a soldier's course. Amen. There's no reserves. There's no retreats. And there's no regrets. Amen. Oh, God, what a soldier. Now, a soldier with a cause. We must go forward. We must stand for that which is right. Brother Jimmy, we've come too far. Thank God to soften up now. We're almost home. Thank God I said we're almost home. I said we're almost home. Brother Jimmy was talking about his mama over there. I got some precious saints over there. Folks, we're almost home. Thank God, it, it's soon and very soon we're going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah to God. You know what I want to hear Jesus say? Well done. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thank God, hallelujah. You've had your trials. you had your testing, but you proved through them all. Praise God. What a day. What a glorious day. That's going to be. How many will stand with me all over the building tonight?